Um, so just give me a moment to get started. We had a bit of a schedule shakeup, um, so we're just kind of filling in some time. So I'm starting a little earlier than I anticipated. Uh, so just give me a moment to tweet out the links. And we will be good to go here. Uh, let me just copy my own Twitch link onto Twitter real quick. Yeah. It's annoying little thing here. Okay. Yes, I tagged myself. Thank you, phone. I know. Um, all right. I'm just going to share this to my own. Thing real quick. Just make sure my chat's good. Okay, yeah. Um, there should be some audio. Yeah. Um, right now, the only picture you should be seeing is um, my BRB um, because I'm still getting set up. Uh, so just a moment here. No, I want to share this to my own Facebook page, please, so that all my friends can see that I'm being dumb on the internet. I'm live. No, because I like I like when my friends watch me play video games, uh, mostly because I have a tendency to play really weird ones, and I like traumatizing my friends, because <laughs> I'm a great person. Okay, shared. Alrighty. Okay, okay. So, um, I am uh, Steph. I go on the internet by 1863 Project. That's kind of like been my username since probably my senior year of high school at this point. And, um, I, uh, decided to do this, um, charity stream thing because I've been watching way too much Vine Sauce lately and they have been doing all these amazing charity streams and I just am, like, in awe of, of what they do and so I decided that this would be a great way to use, like, what I care about, um, and all of that. Uh, so I have no idea. So I've got my chat popped out. So I'm not sure how many of you are even here right now, but hi, welcome. Um, we're going to play some dumb games now. Um, so I'll just get started with, uh, my first one here, which should be here. Yes. Um, is that centered? I don't think it is. Let me f scale to window. Um, I don't think that's quite centered. Let me just check. No, I don't want that window. I want the game. Thank you. Okay, that we're good. There we go. Okay. So, um, this is the uh, Autism Gaming Initiative live stream um, for May 2017. We're going to be doing one of these approximately once a month. And uh, these are going to be helping the Autism Self-Advocacy Network and the Autism Women's Network. So you can uh, check us out. Uh, we have a website. I'm actually going to link to it in the chat right now. Um, so you can see all of our, uh, there's our donation links. You can donate to ASAN or AWN. Totally cool, whatever you donate to. Um, so just feel free to uh, jump right on in. And in the meantime, I'm going to get this game set up. Four, six, seven, eight. All right, so this is the prototype for a game that isn't actually out yet, uh, but I like playing it. This is kind of a game I play it a lot in my spare time. This is Indivisible. Um, this is done by the people who have done, uh, who did Skullgirls, Lab Zero. And, oh, I got some slight frame rate issues. I'm lagging a little, sorry. Uh, but um, this game is, um, I backed this game. Yeah, I backed it too. Um, and it's just, it looks gorgeous. Like I am in, just in awe of how pretty it looks. And so every, when I get bored, I play this prototype on a regular basis because it's just really fun and really pretty. Um, and I love, um, Southeast Asian, um, like history and stuff. I've always wanted to go to Angkor Wat. So this is just, uh, kind of, so like the, the, just the look of this game drew, drew me in like immediately. Um, and I like playing the prototype because it's just, I can't wait till I can attack twice in a row. It'll be nice. There we go. So basically the idea, um, is you play as Ashna, who is the girl I'm running around as right now. Ow. Um, and just kind of got her, her ass head into her. Whoops. I am so sorry, Ashna. Oh my God. Um, there we go. 
So she is, uh, you know, she's living a peaceful life, and then her village gets invaded, and there's the whole, th the whole shebang, and she has to go travel around the world and meet up with all of these other partners to basically save the world and all of that that stuff. So they're, these partners are called incarnations, and she literally carries them around in her third eye chakra. Which gives kind of a new meaning to it's all in your head, I guess. But um, she actually carries them around. This is Zebe. He's my fave. Um, Zebe is definitely based on um, Mongolian history, like in terms of um, like the, the archery culture in Mongolia. Zebe definitely is that. And, uh, I, I love him. Also, in the prototype, he's voiced by Matt Mercer, which is, you know, good news. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so I love Zebe. He's my fave. But, like, all of the character designs for this game are just really creative. And they all draw on a lot of different historical things, um, which I am big time into because I am a historian. Like, it's actually my job. Oh, crud. I am so sorry. Um, I'm trying not to swear as much as I normally do because that's kind of a... I'm from New Jersey and, um, like, in New Jersey, pretty much every other word out of your mouth is... It begins with F and it ends with U-C-K and it is not fire truck. Um, and that's just kind of what it's like, what, you know, being from New Jersey is. Like, there's really just no... There we go. So yeah, when this game was being um, kickstarted, or I should say it was on Indiegogo, um, I actually, uh, every time a new character was revealed, I wrote a post, like, um, or I added to a post that I had on Tumblr where I was just kind of writing about the um, characters and the uh, character designs and what historic, what their historical basis was and all of that. And that is now my claim to fame on TV Tropes. Somebody linked to that on the, the character page for this game. And um, that is, like, probably the uh, the most internet famous I've ever been for doing history crap. Like, so that was very uh, exciting for me to have that linked. Somebody, was, somebody actually linked to this. And they were like, yeah, this is a thing. I was touched. <laughs> I was very touched. Uh, oh, Tungar. Tungar's great. So Tungar is, um, his basis obviously is in India, um, and, uh, he actually has a weapon called an- oops, wrong button, there we go. He has a weapon called- oh, I'm lagging. That's my bad. Okay, there we go. So Tungar has a weapon called an Urumi, which I'm gonna show you, um, and it is real. This is a 100% real historical weapon. That is, in fact, a flexible sword. Oh, crap, that was- I- that is actually a flexible sword that moves, like, that is a real- weapon that exists in the real world historically um it is still sometimes used there are still a few people who train in that that in the use of the arumi um and so it's kind of a cool i can't go there yet i have to get something to get through that uh i'm having a little lag this game tends to lag on me a little bit because it's it's you know animated so uh, don't worry the the flexible sword yeah you know, or sort of it's one sword and the metal is actually- oh crap. It actually bends. It is really cool. Like, it is a real weapon. Um, you can look it up. U-R-U-M-I. Rumi. Um, and it, it is actually a, a sword that bends- yeah, some of them are multiple blades on one hilt, yes. Tungar's is not. He is just a regular one. But this is a real weapon, um, which I think is just really cool that they include- they chose to include this weapon in the game. Um... Yeah, the uh, Mananigal, or I think in this game it's called the Crosshue, but yeah, it's it's the the it, it's called a bunch of different things in different cultures. But yeah, it is that um, it's a Southeast Asian Asian mythological character of sorts that um, it basically flies around and its head removes from its body, and then like its intestines follow, and it it goes around hunting people. Um, it particularly is fond of I think pregnant women. Um, so that's kind of a, a thing, yeah. So it's kind of creepy. Uh, <laughs> which I guess makes it a good uh, enemy in a video game. Uh, come on. There we go. I think I am lagging a little bit on my, uh, because the lag's on my end. Let me just close a window or two here. Um, because that seems to be my, uh, control delete real quick. 
that seems to be my issue here. Um, I think I just got to close more of my stuff. No, I don't want to take screenshots of my screen. Come on. I'm just going to temporarily close like some other apps that I have open so I can optimize this a little more. There we go. Okay, so I can absolutely 100%. Oh, I just closed the chat. Whoops. Okay. Um, I'll use it on my phone. But anyway, the um, I can absolutely guarantee you the next game I play will not have lag because the next game I play is very old. Um, it is from 1994. And uh, it does not... Um, it basically... It doesn't really... Oh my god, I'm not doing... I am not doing very well with this, I think, because the time being screwed up is just screwing with me. Ow! Uh. Come on, guys, let's go. Ashna, please. Come on, one more, guys, one more. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so the game I'm gonna play after this is a um, time honored tradition in my household. Um, because we are not normal people in my household. And, uh, there we go. I'm just getting some bad frame rates here. The weird thing is it's not dropping any of them on the, <laughs> on the stream. It's just going just fine on the stream. It's kind of funny. And then sometimes it, like, will settle. But yeah, there we go. I've even got, like, OBS and the game optimized right now, so... Yeah, this isn't looking very good, and I am so sorry. So we're gonna... We're gonna play the ultimate game soon. It is a terrible game. Ah... Uh, Okay. That is a tape here, by the way, so if you're into Sansverse, you can call him Seymour and um, have a great time with that. Uh, yeah, I, I, I enjoy Sansverse. I don't know how many of you enjoy Sansverse. Um, Sansverse is just very funny. And um, it's it's like if you're not aware of what it is, it's like these animal vendor blogs. So, uh... They, uh, they started, like, trying to sell things. It really started with, like, this, this tapir named Seymour who was trying to sell sand in exchange for compact discs. And, um... That, uh, just kind of expanded. The main three, like, sources of lore for Sandsverse are Seymour, a proboscis monkey named Elmer, and, um, a boar named Horus. And they, they basically, they talk in this very strange, very particular syntax. And it's just kind of a thing. Yeah, uh, and they, 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 there's, it's just very strange. But it's very funny. It's very, it's like kind of typical internet Dadaist humor. And, um... So it's just kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, that exists. I gotta pull my chat back up. Just a moment. Uh, come on. Twitch, there we go. No. I want to see what you're all saying about Sansverse. Meanwhile, uh, my favorite streamer is playing right now, and he's playing Arms Test Punch, and I am not getting to watch him because I'm doing this. <laughs> Gee, you know, Vinny, normally you start at, like, midnight. What's going on here? <laughs> I'm... Ah, I'm timing this so badly. Oh my god, okay. Let me just get a running start. Oh my god, why can't I... Okay, normally I have no trouble doing this. I'm not... There we go. So... 
I think I'm having like some frame rate issues and I just can't like climb. There we go. So that's actually my favorite mechanic in this game, is that you can use the weapons to navigate the environment. Yeah, see, like, my, my, my judgment is just so off. And I have no... Whoop. I have no idea what I'm doing. Where is my own... Oh, pause this for a moment. I'm just trying to figure out what I'm doing here. Hold on. No, I want to go to my own thing. Thank you. There we go. I want to go to my chat. Thank you. There we go. Okay, so now I should be able to see you guys in my chat um, on my phone. Just a moment. Ugh. It would be cool if I wasn't playing like crap. But I am. I'm playing horribly. Uh, luckily, the um, next game that I'm going to be playing requires absolutely no skill on any level. It just requires you to be really creative. Um, which is my specialty, I think. It's basically a weird writing program that has played into my really, really disturbing sense of humor for about 20 plus years now. I am very excited to bring you all... Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna make a quick editing adjustment because this is really irritating me. Um, let me just see if I can just make some quick setting changes here. Uh, cause it's, it's just being really irritating. Output. Um, video, yeah, I'm, oh no, I, I, I can't do it cause it's currently active. Whatever. Okay, but, um, yeah, here we go. Um, yeah, so that's that, I guess. Someone would get an attack back at the grate. So yeah, if you can tell, this game is kind of like, uh, I'm just going to bring up my chat on the browser because it's not working on my phone, because uh, my phone is like three years old. Um, and yeah, I need to upgrade it. So I'm just going to pull chat up on here because I accidentally closed it when I was trying to close some stuff. No, I don't want any of these things. No, I don't. Oh, it just came back up. Incredible. Okay. That was amazing. Uh, I was not expecting that. Okay, I'm back in the chat, guys. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Anyway, let's climb some walls. Oh god, I am lagging. There we go. I am lagging horribly. You know what? I think we're just gonna switch games right now. We're gonna go to the ultimate game uh, that I have. So I'm just gonna swap it out right now because this is clearly not working. Um, so we're just gonna swap out. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna swap to, uh, now you're gonna hear a weird noise while this game is loading. It makes weird sounds. Uh, and, uh, it's just a very strange old program that I've been using for a very long time. So I'm just gonna, you're gonna hear like a weird noise while this is booting. Um, like you'll hear the crack of a whip and a cowboy, uh, and then you're gonna hear like, creepy children laughing. Okay, so just just bear with me. Okay, since Indivisible didn't want to cooperate, yeah, you can click it a lot. <laughs> you can skip the sounds if you click it a lot, but I feel like everyone needs to hear them. So we are going to be, in I'm going to introduce you all to, is very concerned, yes, you should be, because this is the ultimate program, uh, Storybook Weaver Dogs, <laughs> for um, Windows 93, uh, yeah, Win Windows uh, 3.1, and then later Windows 95, 98. Uh, so let me just pull it up here for you all to see it because it is a masterpiece. Okay, that, there it is. Okay, welcome to Storybook Weaver. Uh, enjoy your stay. I do not have bumpers and I wish I did. Okay, so Storybook Weaver Deluxe was made by Mech, the uh, wonderful minds behind Oregon Trail um, and Word Munchers and Number Munchers and like all of those great games that you probably played in elementary school on, an, on a Mac. Oh yes, doorknob man. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna yeah we're we're gonna see doorknob man. We're gonna doorknob man is great. I I love doorknob man. He is he is like one of the best characters. Uh, 
Let me, uh, yes, okay. So, yeah, and the stripper, <laughs> yes. <laughs> this program has a lot of questionable clip art, and that is why I have, one of the reasons I've used it since I was five years old. I am now 28. Uh, so, we are going to play some Storybook Weaver. So, uh, Storybook Weaver allows you to add um, borders and, and, and crap to your, your homepage. So, um, we're going to just kind of do, let's see, we can, I mean, we have like a lot of options, like here's an amusement park, um, or we could have some dragons fighting some knights, or we could do these, uh, I guess, I think these are worms because they don't have legs, W Y R M S, or you could do a holiday theme. You've got, unfortunately you only have like Christmas and Valentine's day. I mean, there's more Christmas, and uh, I think this is even more Christmas. Yeah, like, there's no Hanukkah in Storybook Weaver, but there is a menorah in this program, yeah. Uh, yes, the Jewel Tone IMAX. Yeah, uh, my middle school had those. I remember them. Um, like, they were all the different pretty colors. My middle school had the um, the blue ones, like the teal blue ones. Um, they, they, and I remember thinking, oh, these are pretty and stuff. And then I got really excited when I was in eighth grade because my... Um, computer lab like I looked off to the side on a shelf and there was uh, a Commodore 64 sitting there and I'd never seen one up till that point so I freaked out and I was like I want this uh, okay did I download Storybook Weaver from somewhere I have actually owned Storybook Weaver since I was five years old um, and I actually have the uh, I have the um, file I can just give it to people um, I will be more than happy to um, just kind of yes it is very 90s it's 1994 uh, when this program first came out. This is very 90s. Uh, so I can give the zip file to anybody who wants this program because, like, everybody should play this. Oh, here, you know what we can do here? We can do the opening of the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. Here's a sewer. Uh, <laughs> let me go get Captain Lou Albano. Uh, <laughs> um, now, so you can then add, once you have have it for yeah oh yeah there we go there we go i'm gonna start giving away storybook waiver if you donate if you donate now i will i will dump the link in the chat right now <laughs> so uh go right ahead if you go to our, our donor page um which is you know on, on on our website uh if you if you donate i will happily put storybook weaver in the chat <laughs> great idea wolfie thanks um, because it's something that needs to be seen to be believed. Um, if, and of course, if you're a member of AGI already, I'll just dump it in Discord for everybody. Um, so you can put clip art of basically anything you want, except for a telephone. For some reason, this program does not have a telephone. And it has vexed me for about 23 years now. Um, it has a phone booth, but it does not have a telephone. Uh, here, we can put like... I don't know. This guy kind of looks like Donald Trump, actually. Let me delete him. Um, but you can put, like, pretty much anything on this page. Like, here's a very 90s-looking uh, kind of clip art here of this, like, with those shorts and everything. Or here, you can have Little Mac from uh, Punch-Out. Oh, I still have to start. Oh, that's... I, I changed that title, like, multiple times. Why did it not take? Okay, this is very irritating. Uh, God damn it, Twitch, you... Okay, I'm not. I'm gonna try not to curse out Twitch. I'm trying really hard to not like let the New Jersey out right now because this is for charity. I have to be good. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna go to my own channel and just make some quick adjustments. Where no no dashboard. Thank you. Broadcast. I've changed this like three or four times and it's not taking. Sometimes Twitch does that. Uh, May twenty seventeen. Charity live stream. I am now playing the best game ever, Storybook Weaver Deluxe, which, believe it or not, Twitch recognizes as a game, which is amazing. Um, okay, there we go. All right, the jersey must be continued. Yeah. Um, there we go. Okay, I should have gotten rid of the test. The test stream only thing should be gone now. I am trying very hard to make sure that it. Uh, no, it's still there. What the heck? Uh, okay, no, it's 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 not there on my app, but I don't know. Yeah, oh, you live in New Jersey. Hey, 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 where? I'm in Bergen County. Um, I live in North Jersey, so. Right outside New York City, so I, I kind of have a bit of closer to a New York accent than a Philly accent. Uh, you'll hear me say it. Uh, you'll hear my accent come out if I get mad. 
Or if I, yes, you're going to be here on Sunday. You get to live with all my cats. For, oh, Warren County. Yeah, okay, I know where that is. Yeah, I'm in Bergen. So uh, you're not too far from me. I used to do interlibrary loan with Warren County a lot when I was um, a reference librarian. Um, yeah, my accent will come out if I say the word water. Um, you know, and uh, also if I um, start yelling at somebody for driving badly uh, in front of me. So at some point I will on stream play Mario Kart because I want people to see... Uh, you know what we're going to put on this? You know what this page needs? This page needs a dinosaur. That's what we're going to do. I'm going to put some dinosaurs on here. Um, because, yes, Storybook Weaver has dinosaurs. <laughs> Virginia. <laughs> the only person in your family without a Philly accent because you learned to talk in Virginia. You know what? Since if you're if you're near enough to Philadelphia, you should go to too many games if you can in June, and then we can like meet up and you can watch me cry when I meet the people from Vine Sauce because that's what I'm going to do. Um, yeah, yeah. North Jersey is good. Um, the, uh, except for the part where we don't have as many Wawas. That part really sucks. Uh, yeah, yeah. For the people who are not from New Jersey, Wawa is um a miraculous convenience store slash gas station with free to use uh no surcharge atms um and so if you're from like eastern pennsylvania or um or southern jersey it's like it's yeah it's it's great um wawa is like this like heavenly godly place and it, it's just my favorite i love wawa I mean, like, that's, that's just a New Jersey thing. Like, you kind of have to love Wawa. Okay, so here's this very horrified looking... I think it's got three claws, so I'm gonna say it's an Allosaurus, but it's hard to tell. Um, <laughs> because this is from 1994. Um, oh, it is actually. It says Allosaurus on my thing. Um, it's not coming up because I've only got the window here. But there is a, um, like, a caption thing here, too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh god. Oh yeah, my my godfather um is like fascinated by Helen Keller, so I can actually see why that's a thing. Um yeah, so there's a lot of weird like there's okay, there's a Parasaurolophus in this program, but they call it a hadrosaur, but this is a Parasaurolophus. I I am from New Jersey. I I know what a hadrosaur looks like because we have uh we literally the hadrosaur is named after a town in New Jersey, so um yeah, that's ours. That's our dinosaur, thank you. This is a parasaurial office, um, and it looks like it's permanently um, defecating, which is like my one of my favorite <laughs> favorite things. Like it looks like it's just constantly trying to go to the bathroom. Uh, yeah. Yep. So it's it's just a. Uh, it's a great great. Is that Ducky's dad? Oh God. Oh my God. Uh, Don Bluth. I actually uh, backed a Kickstarter too for uh, to make a Dragon's Lair movie. Um, so anyway, the point of Storybook Weaver isn't just the bad clip art. It's also the um, the real reason I use it is because it has this really really awful text to speech, and um, yeah, so like, like yeah. Like, um, like, I'll just have it read the word Allosaurus for a moment. Yeah, it didn't even come close. So, <laughs> so the gift of Storybook Weaver is that, um, oh yeah, Northampton, okay, Pennsylvania, yeah, 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 that's that part that's like, um, it's like near the Delaware River. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I did my undergrad in, uh, Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, so it was a, uh, thing yeah um that's the thing i've spent more time in pennsylvania than uh i like the average person i guess who doesn't live there um because i did my undergrad there i've um so yeah i'm very fond of lancaster county actually i used to go to lancaster county on vacation like all the time when i was a little kid yeah easton yes that's near the crayola factory yes um which i love uh yeah so we're gonna anyway we're gonna write a story about my hero doorknob man i'm gonna pull him out and let's see so I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna introduce you all to Doorknob Man. For those of you who have not met Doorknob Man, he is an actual thing. Oh yeah, Easton. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, there's a, there's a couple of colleges in that area. Um, I, I know a lot of people who I went to high school with went to college in Easton. So we're gonna we're gonna introduce you to Doorknob Man. So Doorknob Man is listed as a fantasy adult, um, because everything is listed under these. All the clip arts listed under yeah, you know, Doorknob Man. Oh my God. 
Oh my god. Okay. I I I I want to keep this. <laughs> this is doorknob man. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> um, <laughs> he is exactly what it says on the tin. He is literally a man with a doorknob for a head. Um. So we're gonna write a story about doorknob man. Doorknob man breaks free. Uh, the author um, is gonna just be. Uh, I'll just write the chat because I'm gonna let the chat do some of the writing for me. Yeah, kind of like a football. I not remember this beautiful creature. He does. He has broken handcuffs. He he has broken handcuffs. So it's implied that like he's been freed from something, from some kind of like servitude and uh, or or bondage. And it's like I we I don't know what happened to Doorknob Man. What is his backstory? Like what is what is what is yeah Doorknob Man. So yeah, Doorknob Man is like. Um, ah, oh, crap. Text is too big to fit in the window. I'll just take out a word. There we go. There we go. Yeah, so Storybook Weaver was made by the uh, MEC, better, um, which is the Minnesota Educational Computing Consortium. Um, and it, um, they made some great games, great games, like Oregon Trail. Like, those were, oh my god, I love Hey Arnold, move it, football head. Um, they made some really good games. Like, they made, um, they made Oregon Trail, they made Word Munchers, they made uh, Number Munchers, they made, like, a bunch... Oh, yeah. Hey, Alyssa, how you doing? Yeah, we had a little bit of a, uh, a time mix-up, so uh, I I just went a little early to fill in the time. So it's not a big deal. Uh, don't worry, you, you didn't miss much. Um, I, I was trying to stream something and it didn't want to cooperate. So we are now streaming Storybook Weaver uh, because this is just my go-to game for everything in my entire life. Um, so the best, the other best thing about this game, besides the horrible text-to-speech, is there are really terrible MIDI files that you can add to all of your... Your, your things. So I'm going to have it read first. And uh, let's see. Yeah, here we go. So you just listen to it talk for a moment. I'm going to shut up. Doorknob man breaks free. The chat. What is this odd creature? Only the Minnesota Educational Computing Consortium knows. Yeah, it's it's um this is a writing program that I got uh, my dad bought for me when I was 5 in 1994 and it has been my favorite toy ever since because I never use it the correct way. Uh the, yes, it is creepy. <laughs> Storybook Weaver is very creepy. Let me put on like I guess I'll put on like the best MIDI the program has. I'm going to use this one. Oh god, at the end of Twin Peaks. Oh my god. What well, was the 90s? So you can add MIDIs like this. And then it'll play. Doorknob man breaks free. The chat. What is this odd creature? Only the Minnesota Educational Computing Consortium knows. Like, my, both my brother and I can sing that entire MIDI, um, which is really terrible because that means we used it way too much. Yeah, the MIDI man is scarier. <laughs> <laughs> the program is just like total nightmare fuel, especially in my hands because I am I am <laughs> I never use it the the way it was supposed to be used. I always use it in a uh, just completely um, horrible ways because you can just make it say anything you want. Yeah, that's like the only that actually that MIDI I just played is the best MIDI in the program. That is like the only. One that, like, if you run it through, like, some kind of MP3 converter thing or whatever, it, um, it sounds normal. Everything else sounds terrible, and you're gonna get to hear some of the terrible ones because I'm going to play them, and they're going to be bad. Uh, so let's see. So let's get Doorknob Man here. He is on his, um, he's on the bridge here of his starship, and, um, let's get him a friend. Okay, so you're gonna now see my all-time favorite piece of clip art in anything I have ever owned. Um, this Storybook Weaver calls this a figurine. It is not a figurine. 
I don't know what it is, but it is not a figurine. This thing is so legendary in my household that my brother, actually, who is an architecture student now, 3D printed a model of this thing for me for Christmas. That is how much this this object in Storybook Weaver has become storied in my family. Um, and we just refer to it as the thing. That's, yes, the thing. It is, yes, it is the hand head thing, yes. <laughs> this is the thing. Um, and it is absolutely one of the greatest gifts that Storybook Weaver has ever given to me. I'm going to enlarge it for a moment just because everyone needs to see this. I know it's, it's, oh yeah, it's a sweet story until you see what the thing looks like. <laughs> We've just called this the thing for about 20 years because we don't, we don't know what it is. And the worst thing is Storybook Weaver calls this a figurine. This is a figurine. Who is going to have this in their house? Besides me. <laughs> Besides me. Who's going to have this in my house? In their house. I almost want to, sc I'm just screen capping for my, myself. I just love everyone's reactions to the thing. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, it's in the Polnareff face. Yes, it is. I want it. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so proud of, of this existing. Uh, this, is, this is my... my. I'm so flush of the thing. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm having like a Joel moment here. <laughs> oh my god. I don't know if it's missing a finger. This is a valid question. My brother modeled it with only four because you can't see the fifth one. Um, but, like, there's no way of knowing because you can't, like, really manipulate the objects very well in this because it's 2D. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm so sorry. Oh, uh, that's actually a tongue. That's its tongue coming up and licking its eye. It's licking its own eye. Um... And, like, again, we, we don't know why it's looking its own eye. And this was supposed to be, like, some kind of a statue that you were supposed to put in your... And I've wanted... If Mech hadn't gone under, like, years ago... If Mech, Mech's gone under a, a long time ago, but if I could find these people, and I think I have, like, the staff that... <laughs> oh, but a tongue can dream shit. <laughs> uh, they, uh... I want to find the staff of Mech because I want to ask them what was going on in their minds when they made this object. The cleaning labels of my tongue thing that really brings it together. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, I, I just... This is, like... It is moistening its eyes like a frog. It is very frog-esque, yeah. Um, except that it's, it's a hand attached to a head and it's never explained. Um, normal, let me bring it back to normal size now. It's normally only, like, this big or so, uh, on the screen. But, like, it's just... <laughs> it's never explained. <laughs> and I think the fact that it's never explained is what makes it so great. I, I, I just find it hilarious. The fact that it exists is just so great. Okay. So, <laughs> I think I saw that in a horror movie. It's something to do with mushrooms. Uh, yeah. Speaking of mushrooms, I can totally, uh... Yeah, there's some Amanita going on in here. Everyone's uh, got their their drugs going. Speaking of mushrooms here, I can... Oh, that's... No, it's... You can also draw in Storybook Weaver. Um, let me see if I can pull up the second window. Hold on. Window capture two. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah, so you can also bring up like another window where you can draw inside the program. Um, that's what I'm doing right now. So I'm actually drawing because you, you can draw the, uh, I, I'm really, I'm not good at drawing with a mouse. I am a traditional artist. So if you want some mushrooms, uh, we can make some mushrooms here. Ah, crud, this is, I, I'm really not doing a good job here. Um, this is horrible. Uh, I'm slightly lighter. Yeah, I'm drawing some mushrooms. Yeah, you'll you'll probably all figure out what I'm doing here, but 
because I can normally draw with I, I draw quite nicely when I'm not drawing with a mouse uh, <laughs> uh, but you know <laughs> beautiful turd room yes uh, I am trying to yes I am trying to make a video game joke here um, and it's looking terrible because I can't draw with a mouse to save my life. Yes, I think there are Amanitas in the clip art. I just wanted to see if I could draw a Goomba because, like... Yeah, so if anyone wants, like, drug shrooms, like, Amanitas are your, like, stereotypical ones, like the ones that are in Alice in Wonderland and and uh, films like that. Yes, it is It is a it is a Goomba uh, because I'm from New Jersey, so this was kind of the necessary joke to make here. Uh, there you go. There you go. Okay. So here he is. Um, he is here. Yeah. It's not bad. For, oh, thank you. It's not bad for joining us. Thank you. Yeah. Here's a Goomba. Here you go. Um, <laughs> so, uh, what's cool is there's easier ways to do these things as well. Um, you can also copy and paste clip art into Storybook Weaver as well. So that is a thing you can do. Can we name him? Yes, you can name the Goomba. Yeah, I um, played Paper Mario for, like, a lot. Um, I loved those games when I was a kid. So, like, having, like, Goombario and Goombella in the party was, like, just so much fun. Oh my god, you're all gonna name the Goomba. Okay, yeah. There we go. Yeah, there he is. So, um, I'm gonna save this just so I don't lose my, my, uh, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Just like start throwing like vaguely Italian sounding names at me. <laughs> mm. <sighs> I actually speak some Italian. I should. Uh, I'm trying not to like go into another language on stream though right now. Uh, but yeah, so like doorknob man. Doorknob man. Gazpacho. Oh, is is like gazpacho. Oh my god. Okay, yeah, Bicolti. That sounds like Biscolti, which are um, amazing. Uh, so yeah. As you can see, when I speak Italian, my accent comes out. So. <laughs> Like, like, accent just came out, like, right there. Like, like, um, like, if I just say random food items in Italian, like, I have, like, a full Italian accent, and then it just goes away when I talk normally. Um, like, if I'm, if I talk about, like, mozzarella, or, uh, or parmigiano, reggiano, or, um, you know, things like that. Like, if I just list those things, yeah, like, full Italian accent. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> okay. Uh. Um, so if it's not obvious, um, for those of you who do not somehow know, I am, I am Italian. Okay, I don't know who donated, but they just donated using the name Waluigi, and that is hilarious. Thank you. Mozadel, yeah, yes, yes, okay, yes, Gab, okay, yeah, so Gabagool is actually, uh, Capicola. Yeah, and it is, uh, Capicola is a, uh, meat that, um, it's, like, kind of like a hamish type thing, kind of like, um, kind of like prosciutto, but it's, it's like, it's really good. Um, and so Southern Italians are the primary makeup, uh, they make that primary, the primary group that came to the United States in the late 19th, early 20th century. And in, um, Southern Italy, sometimes you kind of drop the last syllable on the, uh, on, uh, on words. So, um, Capicola became, uh, Capicolo became Capicol, 
Um, and that kind of got distorted in New Jersey to Gabagool. And so that's why when they're doing, well, on The Sopranos, if someone asks for Gabagool, it's Capicolo. Um, likewise, Mozzadel is another one. Mozzarella. Uh, mozzarella became Mozzadel. Um, I could think of like a, a bunch of, there's like a bunch of words like that. But just It just kind of happened. Um, and it's just, it's just kind of an interesting linguistic thing that I, I find very fascinating. Uh, all right. So anyway, yeah, thank you for donating. We're up to, um, uh, $50 now for the Autism Self Advocacy Network. Uh, Autism Women's Network could definitely use some more donors. Um, we don't have very much over there. So if you know anybody who wants to give, uh, have them give. I'm going to pick a horribly inappropriate MIDI for this page. Um, this one sounds good. We're gonna apply it. This is a clown midi. It's it's got a picture of a clown. Sometimes that happens too. Ah, thanks, thanks, Sam. <laughs> We're linking. Things theme music. Some friends and I write storybook weaver stories like on average, um, like roughly once a week or so, and that theme that is the theme song that we play whenever uh, a specific character um, gets screwed over uh, by fate or by other characters, um, and it's become the character's kind of like theme song. So like we always every time like we hear it like or we've done things where we've like distorted it and then like re-edited it over the story later yeah yeah suffers a midi oh my god he so yeah he suffers a mishap <laughs> Six skating bra. Um, so Storybook Weaver, if you want to kind of get an idea, um, it has a lot of objects that like you wouldn't necessarily like expect it to have. Um, so like, for, I mean, a skateboard, yeah, it's the 90s program. You're going to expect like a skateboard to be in there. That That's kind of a logical one. Uh, but then I can go back a little further and we have things like uh, the Olympic flame is here. Yeah, Doorknob Man is here for his building. Doorknob Man is here to remind you that winners don't do drugs. Um, and then there's like all this gymnastics equipment. Here's a vault. So I guess, uh, I mean, this was 1994, so maybe they were anticipating the Atlanta Summer Olympics in 96. First Olympics I have any memories of, by the way. Uh, there's hurdles in here. So yeah, if anyone wants to like reenact um, Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games, we can we can do that at some point um in in storybook weaver so let me get doorknob man back i have to go into adults and then the subcategory fantasy there's some weird aliens and other things in here tasty cake on stilts oh my god that's a philly thing isn't it tasty cake yeah so here's doorknob man he is shredding he is shredding it up he's gonna scoot the burbs um <laughs> oh my god my parents just donated oh my god my parents just gave me a lot of money in memory of my grandmother. Now I'm going to cry. Crap. <laughs> Thanks, mom and dad. Thanks. Oh, damn it. I'm like emotional now. <laughs> uh, try this game? Yes, pretzels. That's the thing I miss the most about about um, Pennsylvania living there was the pretzels are just so good. Uh, Lidditz, especially. Like, I used to go to Lidditz as a kid, and I learned to, uh, like, kind of do the pretzel thing. Like, I learned how to... There's, like, a little place there where you learn how to fold the pretzels. And so I, I still, like, remember to this day how to fold a pretzel, which is a skill I will never have any use for. The skate park looks like a clown threw up on the walls. Yeah, it is a, a clown vomit skate park. Like, there is... Uh, that That is what's happening, yes. Yes, um... Yeah, let me get some sh totally sick skating midi here. This is a rad midi. Very rad. Now that he was free, yeah. or not man decided to go to the Stadaberg and Schmidt. <laughs> Those are my parents. Skating brat. Yeah, you can tell my family is Italian because there's like, my, my surname is like mostly vowels. <laughs> so, <laughs> I know, it's like we are, um, yeah, we're actually, we're specifically, we're Sicilian, so, like, we're angry all the time. Now that he was free, 
doorknob man decided to go to the Jennifer Dan Schmidt. Dick Dating Branson. And I just realized it said scatter park instead of skate park because that's just the kind of thing Storybook Weaver is, and 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 I just yeah yeah Storybook Weaver is just it's not good at reading things. I like trying to write in Japanese and get it to read um, Japanese because it's not good at it. Um, like if I write um, scatter park, yeah, scatter. It's a scatter park. It, it reads uh, certain words like it reads douchebag, dousha bag or something. Um, it's just not good at reading. It, it's not good at it's not good at doing anything. It's clowns. <laughs> it's only clown scat if the dino is here. The 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 dino that just looks like it's going to the bathroom on everything. Scatter park, John. Oh God. <laughs> Uh, we'd like to take time out of the stream to apologize to Scatman John. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, yeah, so there's some like very interesting backgrounds here. Um, like for some reason, I can pull up a um, I can pull up a, a or an orchestra. Like here's a full orchestra. I don't know what purpose this serves. Um, like we weren't expecting it to read too many curse words. No, they were probably not expecting it. And yet, every other word I've typed into this program my entire life is a very inappropriate word. Um, because I am very juvenile. What? Uh, how- I'm so cute, how are boys not chasing me? Uh, because I'm- a f Oh my god, I just stopped myself from swearing. <laughs> wow, just caught myself. Um, yes, it bothers me too. It's off-center and it's very irritating. It's like very irritating. Uh, but yeah, let's see. How, how, how are boys not chasing me? Good question. Mostly because I am a, t a uh, total loser who, um play Storybook Weaver, probably. Conducted by Nordum. Yeah, let me go get Doorknob Man. Uh, also, although you can actually, this would be a good time to show that you can, like, insert clip art, too. So I'm gonna do that. I just gotta get my browser up here. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I'm not really good at... Dating is not something I've ever been particularly good at, but it's um, mostly because um, my class, when I was growing up, they weren't really nice to me. Uh, so I didn't exactly have any opportunities to really, you know, learn. And, um, you know, and so I'm kind of nervous around men my own age as a result. But, you know, it's a work in progress. And that's one of the reasons I want to go to too many games in June. Is so that I can learn to talk to people in my own age group that I really, really admire and look up to and whatnot. And, um, not have social anxiety attack me. I'm gonna get... Uh... Yeah, let me get my favorite composer. Let me see if I can find a picture of him with a baton, though. Yes. Oh, thank you. I'm glad. <laughs> no, I, I need a picture with a baton. I don't think that... No. None of these are pictures with baton. Oh, okay. Are there any pictures with batons? Oh, there's somebody who drew a picture, but I, I need, like, clip art. I'm a fun line. I've met most of my uh, best friends online. That's, um, with the exception of my best friends from high school, like I've met, uh, the accident. See, that's nice. Like, I, I like, just get so anxious around my, my own age that it just doesn't happen. Baton. Uh, do we have any, pi okay, we don't have any pictures of the baton, so the magic wand will have to do. Uh, come here. Uh, view image. Yeah, I'm doing a thing. I know. Um, so yeah, yeah, meeting people isn't exactly my strong suit, uh, but I'm practicing, so it's important to uh, practice and learn and whatnot. Um, a few people probably know uh, a little more about too many games than I'm willing to admit on stream, but you know. Um, so, you know, in terms of like, oh crap, my uh, interest level in certain things. Um, there we go. Uh, resize. Oh, we're going like 300. There we go. Um, but yeah. So I know that, but like one of the things is like, I really look up to a lot of the streamers who are there. And so talking to them is going to be, can you insert meme images saved on your computer? Yes, you can. Um, you just have to go into like my MS Paint and copy them and then paste them right in. League of Legends and neither of us play it anymore. Well, 
Hey, at least you met before you both stopped playing. That's the important part. I could do like I should do like a Valentine's Day stream where uh like I just like sit here and like field uh like do it like a dating game type scenario. That would be funny. Uh anyway, yeah, so now that I've got some clip art, I can paste it in. Boom. There's Ludwig. Uh <laughs> There's a good con there we go. A good composer. Um <laughs> If you are new here, the Koopalings are like my all-time favorite uh, Mario characters. It's not even a joke at this point. Um, yeah, see, I, I, I see you in chat. I know at least one person in chat knows one of my major motivations for going to too many games. Oh my god, I should play Hot to Full Boyfriend. Yes. <laughs> great game. Absolutely great game. If you've never... He is big. Yes, Ludwig is... Uh, yeah, that's his hair. Uh, let me shrink... Oh, I can't shrink him any more than that? Uh oh, bugger. Let me see if I can, like, repaste. Oh, okay. He is a tad big. I'll just kind of move him down to the foreground here. Um, or I can actually just remove him, but, like... Yay, we are getting... Yeah, Ludwig, Ludwig is so cute. I love him. Uh, I, I am... Hot of a Boyfriend. Yeah. So, if for the for the people who somehow have not seen Hot of a Boyfriend, it's a game where you date pigeons. It's amazing. <laughs> uh, I am a I am a fan of, I, of Hot of a Boyfriend. We're gonna put Doorknob Man in here. Now, I think there might be a baton in this thing but no phone i mean go figure there's oh yeah there's a yes there's a baton oh no it's a drumstick never mind but it'll it'll serve as a baton yeah okay so close enough we have a drumstick working as a baton yeah i Lud ludwig is one of my faves i mean they're i they're like all my faves but like uh lemmy is my absolute absolute fave i main him on mario kart um i'm like a total comedy geek so like lemmy is just He's like me. He's small, and he likes to amuse people. And uh, yeah, <laughs> so yeah, Lemmy's my my boy. I cannot walk on a ball though. Please do not ask me to try to walk on a ball. I just I cannot. Uh, giving an extended middle finger. Yeah, that's because I'm writing this. <laughs> Anytime someone cuts me off in traffic, Jordan he wants to conduct. You know what? That's gonna be the page. Yes, Lemmy is the cutest one. Thank you. Like I like I relate to Lemmy. I am small and cute, and I like making people smile and, and laugh. So it's like he's he's like I, I relate to him on a personal level. <laughs> mm. But he um, Lemmy's the reason I got into fandom in the first place. I was um kind of you know I was like in my huge Nintendo phase in like sixth seventh grade, and I found a website uh called Lemmy's Interviews where a person was writing all of this fan fiction where Lemmy would interview other video game characters and it was just really cute and I was like, "Oh my god, this is cool that people write these things. I could do this." And I started writing fan fiction and that's basically my intro to fandom. Up your head and out. Okay. All right. Good night. Uh right. I'll see you soon. Yeah, don't worry. This whole thing will be up on YouTube. Um so I'll also record the story that we write and also throw that up separately because you know, storybook weaver. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, constructed. Oh my god, I was, I was, I'm not even. Instructed the orchestra to play the clown midi on this page. The clown midi orchestra became esteemed and world renowned. Due to door knob man's expert conducting. Constructed. Yeah, I think I just kind of put that in my head. Also, we have a thing. Um, some of my friends and I have a thing where we, when we write these um, bizarre stories, where um, the Empire State Building builds shacks. And that is a reference to a Hunger Games simulator run we had, where the Empire State Building was a character in the Hunger Games simulator and it, it, it built a shack even though it was another building. Uh, clown midi, here we go. For not man demonstrated the orchestra to make a clown midi on this page. Ah, it does not want to do the, the same. The clown midi orchestra became esteemed and world renowned due to for not man's expert conducting. Yeah. Okay, so there we go. Uh, it's so loud. Would that be like Frankenstein? Yeah, it kind of was. Like, that's kind of the thing. It was like, uh, it was kind of like a Dr. Frankenstein situation. 
No, no, they're not. <laughs> they might say building. Oh my god. You do not want to know what we've seen, what I've seen on DeviantArt. <laughs> um, some people actually do personify uh, buildings um, on DeviantArt, and it's it's very interesting because so, some of them are are like normal, and then some of them are not, are kind of you know strange art. But you know, don't go on DeviantArt if you want to live. Um, so generally, yeah, DeviantArt is not the kind of place that you really want to. No, fortunately, it was not uh, Empire State Building and Preg. It didn't go that far. But there's a there's like a group of people who like glorify disasters on there, and they like. Um, I've seen people who are interested in um hooking up with the Titanic. Yes, it's like furry porn, but with architecture. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Um, like there are people who want to. Where's the building? Somebody, you're so thick. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh god i'm gonna think that every time i see, i like look out at the skyline and it's there i'm just gonna be like oh god the chrysler is actually one of our better known skyscrapers yeah um there's a person who personified this very ugly building that looks like the monolith from 2001 a space odyssey called one pen plaza that nobody should ever have to um one pen plaza is not a very not a very attractive building uh like i'll bring up a picture of it so Everyone can just see it's not very good looking. Um, let me uh, just uh, just pull it up here real quick. Uh, window capture. We want uh, this window. Yes, that's the one we want. Uh, it does not want to pick up that window. Okay. Um, you know what? Here, I'm just gonna dump it in the chat. This is one pen plaza. Um, not a very um, notable building, or one that really you would think anyone would care about, and yet there it is. Um, oh no, we don't need another. Delete, delete, delete. Remove. There we go. Yes, I want to remove that. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, it's like not a very, like compared to most of the buildings in New York, it's kind of like a, like a big square. Um, kind of like a monolith, um, but it doesn't really stand out in in a city where like everything is like much taller than it. So it's like kind of a nondescript building that you don't really return the slab or suffer my curse. <laughs> um, it just doesn't stand out in like a city where everything is like much taller than it, and it sits on top of Penn Station. So I'm just kind of, which is where I usually come in. And just, What's your offer? <laughs> uh, let's see. What else can you? There we go. Doorknob man. Oh my ocean man, but it's doorknob man. Yeah, uh, so if you didn't see the news the other day, a giant sinkhole opened up, like, right in front of Mar-a-Lago, um, which is... There's there's some metaphor there, I guess. Um, it's just kind of... Yeah, it's there. Uh, doorknob man. Come here, doorknob. Doorknob man, come here. No, let me put doorknob man. Thank you. Here he is. I'm going to give him a shovel. If this program has shovels. Uh, tools. Yes, it has a shovel. Okay. I, I can give him a shovel. Of course, Storybook Weaver doesn't have, like, guns or anything. Um, but, like, there's a reason for that. Yeah. New York City can be very stressful. I've, you know, adapted to it because I grew up here. I've, I've lived here, like, my whole life. So I'm just basically, you know, New Yorker. Uh, like, local. And um, I'm just going to draw a hole real quick. Just make a hole. Uh, very quickly. Boink. And, uh, yeah. It's shovel knob. It's like Shovel Knight, but, like, with a doorknob. It's it's great. This is the new DLC for Shovel Knight, everybody. Um, <laughs> and, um, uh, yeah. Play this MIDI. This is a good one. Yeah, it is, like, a sense. It's a giant sensory overload. I've adapted to it. Like, I don't go anywhere without headphones if I'm alone in New York because, like, I need them. And, uh, like, there are tricks to, like, getting on the subway in certain spots so that you're not near people and things like that. You just kind of, like, learn. 
but god is it is it it can be very stressful um especially if you're not like having a good like a good sensory day uh oh you know what you know who we should see we should see paul who turned into a skeleton um so go yeah so paul is a um he is a uh, story starter on storybook weaver um and he just kind of became a skeleton um for no reason uh, and it's just never explained and it's the best so storybook weaver has these kind of story starters um i guess so like if you weren't feeling creative like it could kind of kick start you and kind of get you going oh i don't want to see no i want to go to my uh that's not what i wanted to go to i want to do that um and it's just not uh and so basically there were there most of the story starters were like okay and then there's one that just is so questionable um, that I actually, I actually have a recording of it because I, and like I uploaded it to YouTube because it's just one of those things that is just, I have a lot of questions about it. Um, the fact that it exists is just very questionable. Uh, I just gotta find it. I, I, I uploaded it like two years ago, so it's, I gotta scroll back through like all my stuff on my old, my like non-gaming YouTube. Um, cause I just kind of threw it up on there and I was like, yeah, here you go. Uh, da -da -da -da. storybook weaver. Yeah, it's just lots of, uh, some old videos from when I went to Comic-Con a couple years ago. Uh, there it is. Frightening Paul. Yes. Okay. I'm just going to link this in the chat because I feel like this is one of those things that kind of needs to be seen. Yeah, remember Paul's story? Yes, Paul was a skeleton, or, or he became a skeleton. He he was with his friends, and they went to a haunted house, and like for some reason, uh, Paul had a like panicked, and he became a skeleton. And this is never explained, and he's just a skeleton with a top hat, or not top hat, a cowboy hat, and he's just like he's just there. Um, so we can go to um, Adults Fantasy again, and you can again. That's where the skeleton is. This is Paul. Normally he's wearing a hat. But we're also going to... I think it's time to show off the um, sexy goblins in Storybook Weaver. There are sexy goblins. And uh, yeah, there there are three things in this program that are considered goblins. All of them are in weird states of... Un, uh, un, somewhat uncomfortable states of undress. So, yes, here's... A, yeah, <laughs> yeah Wolf, Wolfie loves these guys because they're just ridiculous. Here's the second one. Here's the third one. It's really a boggart, but, you know, it's close enough. Um... So yeah, these are the the like the like stripper goblins that this program for some reason uh, just thought were necessary, um, and they are great, and I love them. Yeah, they they are just disturbing. Yeah, so we're just gonna like have them all uh, getting all over here. Yeah, the orange one. Yeah, the orange one in particular is kind of like yeah, check me out. Yeah, look at like it's it's just. It's a very uncomfortable moment. Right on the town. Get the club. Yeah, the club the goblins are really going at it. That's a line from a very old one we wrote like two years ago. Um. Mm. Yeah, here they are. The uh, goblins, they are pretty great. Um, so let me just see if I can find some kind of appropriately sensual music. I think the saxophone midi would probably do. There we go. Meanwhile, the sexy goblin decided to go out for a night on the town and hit the club. Yeah. Here they go. They're going out, they're going to have a good time. Um, maybe do some ecstasy. You know, whatever goblins do. Don't do drugs, kids. Um, yeah. And, like, the settings in this program are very ranged. Yeah, the diaper goblin. <laughs> yeah. Like, I could do a uh, story set in, um, I guess, Athens. I suppose it's supposed to be Athens. Um, or somewhere in Greece. Um, I can use the White House if I want to write, like, House of Cards, Storybook Weaver Edition. Uh, please don't tempt me. Drugs don't do winners. <laughs> Yeah, winners don't do drugs, kids. Don't do drugs. I'll have to get that, like, Captain Lou Albano PSA up here. Uh, this is, I think, vaguely New York-esque because it looks like it has the Empire State Building, but, like, 
It's just more like a generic city. Um, so you have like a ton of options with Storybook Weaver, and they are all um, questionable. How about this very 90s mall, uh, for example, with an arcade in it, um, right out at the no late 80s, early 90s. Um, this is what malls look like. Stay in drugs, don't do vegetables, eat your school. <laughs> Good advice. Eat your school, everybody. Eat the entire school. Just inhale the entire school. Because then you don't have to go to school anymore. It's pretty great. Um, a good foundation is the breakfast of knowledge. Yes. <laughs> oh my god, this is just... Oh, one of my friends reblogged my thing. Very nice. Thank friend. Okay. Um, let's see. Yeah, one of my one of my uh, best friends just reblogged my post about the thing, so that was nice. Um, so what I tend to use this thing for is, um, if you've ever been inside like one of those really fancy casinos, they have like all those shops and whatnot. And um, so we use tend to use this as the closest approximation to a casino. Doorknob man is. We're gonna introduce you to the casino owner. So, um, a character that um, my friends and I created for Storybook Weaver, um, things that we do, is the casino owner, and he is another piece of bizarre clip art that just shouldn't exist, and yet here he is. Um, so, Doorknob Man is here to meet with the casino owner. So, I'm gonna. Uh, so, the casino owner is also a statue that should not be a statue. And he is um, very big, like very big, and very angry. And uh, somehow or other, he became the casino owner. This is a sentence we write pretty much every time. Casino owner has excellent taste in tattoos. <laughs> yeah, like it's like these weird um, blue flowers, like are just covering this thing's body, and then it has like this neck of waffles. Uh, and this is never explained again by Storybook Weaver because it just never explains anything. Here, I'm gonna pick uh, one of my favorite middies. I like this one, the space midi. Yeah, here we go. Doorknob man makes his way to the casino, where he greeted the resident casino owner. The casino owner grunted <laughs> at him and acknowledged his newfound freedom. Then he encouraged him to try the slot. The casino owner did it on his shift because he is the casino owner and the casino belongs to him. <laughs> sure, Kawainu got pranked by its friends while drunk off its ass. Yeah, basically. It's, uh... Yeah. One of my favorite things to do is make that clip art, like, gigantic and just have its face take up, like, the entire screen. It's just very funny. Um, you can do really... To sing, uh, d d d d d d d yeah, uh, oh, yeah, you ready for some more weird clip art? There is a portrait in this program that looks like John F. Kennedy. I am not joking. Um, uh, here it is. Or the story is getting very Dadaist very quickly, but that's kind of how everything I, I I'm like trying to be clean. Um, like this is a clean storybook weaver run. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm I'm trying to clean storybook weaver run. Like it's a run. Like it's a game that you have to run. Uh, 
Yeah, it looks like JFK, and it's like very, very strange. Um, like no explanation as to why it looks like JFK. Yeah, it's JFK, isn't it? J it's JFK. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. It's just not a. It, it looks like JFK. Like there's no. It, there's like no explanation again, but here we are. We just, Nori Book Weaver, no mercy run. <laughs> I would do a no mercy. I would, I would do a, uh, yeah. You know, like if you look at a Komainu, yeah, Komainu, yeah, it does kind of look like the casino owner. Like if you get a good picture of one, I guess. Yeah. I wonder if that's kind of what they were going for with the casino owner. I don't know. I, I, I just kind of call him the casino owner because that's just who he's become to me. Um, yeah, are they singing Walking on the Moon? Storybook or Weaver speed run 100 pages in 10 minutes. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> someday. Someday I'll just make like that. There's a. Yeah, like if you look at that, it does kind of look like the casino owner. It's, um, yeah, it's got kind of this. It's kind of similar build, similar, like the, the main is kind of similar. Yeah, um, so one of the things I like to do is I'll record the um, Storybook Weaver stories in read mode, like, because you can go into read mode, and then I'll pl I'll put other bits of music over it in a video editing uh, program. So, like, yeah, sometimes I'll have them do, like, various midis and, and stuff. Does any of these, like, sound like kind of a... Yeah, I think these kind of sound like a serenade type. I don't really think I have any real, like, serenade-y... Nah, that's not very good. Hmm. I'll just use that one. It doesn't apply at all. Uh, where did it go? Give me my MIDI. Apply my MIDI. Thank you. This is a very loud MIDI, I'm sorry. Kennedy. Yeah, there is its bad pronunciation of. There's its bad pronunciation of Japanese karaoke instead of karaoke. Uh, I mean, I can't expect it to be very good at, at anything, really. Uh, here they are. They're gonna be singing karaoke. Yeah, it, it, it said it like karaoke instead of karaoke. Uh, no, I want to drag out another. Thank you. They are singing. They are making great music together. John F. Kennedy. Yeah, if you put a period, it will pause. So, like, if you're doing, like, an initial, it will just pause. Like, um, like, I'm trying to think of, like, a good example. Like, like, for example, like, the pop star, or, pop, like, the punk singer who Wendy Koopa was named after, Wendy O. Williams. Like, if I were to put Wendy O. Williams, it would go. Wendy O. Williams. See, it pauses regardless of, like, what you do, because it's just... It's not that great. <laughs> I'm reading. Um, it also has a Spanish voice, but its Spanish voice um, is not very good either. Um, and it just kind of has very, a very strange, like very strange diction and whatnot. Um, so yeah, I, I can put some other like backgrounds in here. John F. Cutto. Yeah, John F. Car John F. Carrick. <laughs> John F. Carrick. <laughs> Cut okay. Yeah, John John F. Cut okay. Um, like there's a there's like weird thing. Here. Oh yeah, there's like a thing that like looks like Tatooine if Tatooine had water on it. Um, it's got multiple moons though instead of suns. Um, yeah, so it's not like a I can't do like a twin sun squad squadron thing here, but you know. Uh, yeah. If yeah, if for the record, I really like Star Wars a lot. I keep a bust of Wedge Antilles on my desk. That's not an exaggeration. I'm like literally looking at it right now. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I'm kind of a, I'm one of those annoying people who's into like somewhat obscure Star Wars characters. Um, yeah, so uh, there are vehicles in Storybook Weaver. I'm going to go get a boat of some variety. So you have lots of different types. You have like a galleon, like a pirate ship or a Spanish type galleon. What is this? Storybook Weaver Deluxe. It is a walking disaster from 1994. Um, it's actually, it's a writing program. Um, it's a writing program that I have never used correctly. There's outriggers. Um, 
You have all these, oh yeah, you have like a Viking warship. Uh, it is a program created by um, MEC, the Minnesota Educational Computing Consortium. And uh, it's really just a, um, a ridiculous toy that I've been using since I was five years old. Uh, that's a riverboat. Um, do we have like any other, you can have like a, oh, there's a ferry. That's, that's not a ferry. That's a, that's a cruise ship. After the witness in the God Awful Star Wars episode one, Doorknob Man decided to flood the entirety of Tatooine. <laughs> you know what? We're just going to go with it. We're going to, I'm going to put, I'm going to like copy and paste that line in verbatim because that's just tripod raising underwater wine again. <laughs> We're just going to paste these in. This is, this is going to be dialogue. I'm going to, I'm just going to do this. This is actually text uh, now in Storybook. Since the chat is helping write this, um, we're just going to, I'm going to probably do a stream at some point where I just let uh, the chat write the entire story by themselves and I just make it as it goes along because I think that would be very funny. Uh, just going to do. He declared triumphantly. Uh, yeah, it's like the, the, now this is pod racing. It's like one of the most questionable lines in that film. Does, yeah, does anyone, speaking of Star Wars, does anyone want to, you know, has anyone heard the tragic tale of Darth Plagueis the Wise? Or... <laughs> That's like my favorite meme right now, I'm sorry. Uh, I need Doorknob Man. No, give me Doorknob Man. Here he is. Okay, I just need to get a boat for him now. Let me just kind of plonk him in a boat so he doesn't drown. Um, because I don't know if doorknobs can swim or not. Uh, I think doorknobs sink because they're metal. It's a Sith legend, so we probably haven't. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. yeah. He's going to have a, uh, like a... Okay, so one of the cool things you can actually do with Storybook Weaver is you can edit the clip art. Um, you can, if I had to, like, I could have cropped doorknob man's legs so that he fit better in the boat. Doorknob man can walk on water. Doorknob man confirmed for Jesus, everybody. Uh, yes, uh, every Easter Sunday we celebrate the ascension of Doorknob man um, as he rises from the dead. <laughs> uh, I'm the worst Catholic. I am. I was. I was. Yeah. There we go. Let's play some triumphant music for this. After the witness in the Godawful Star Wars episode 1, Doorknob Man decided to flood the entirety of Tatooine tripod racing underwater, when he can be declared <coughs> triumphantly. Yes, Doorknob Man does have a, um, unibrow. It's glorious. You're the venerable brass deity. <laughs> That's Doorknob Man for you. Uh, he is truly a uh, legendary figure. Uh, he truly, Doorknob Man is is just uh, yeah. There we go. Yeah, he's um, honestly just pretty great. I am very fond of Doorknob Man. He's just yeah. He's just a special character. He has a big, big warm space in my heart. He, um, he's just great. I love him. Uh, <laughs> like, you don't even have to change the character's name. You don't have to, like, make up any, like, name for this character. He's just called Doorknob Man, and it's perfect. You know what? Let's just make a page, yeah. Doorknob Man can... Off on water. Basilisk Lizard confirmed. I love basilisk lizards. They're so cute. And I like watching them run across water. Like, they're just very cute animals. Uh, I need to get door not man. Should not be this difficult. There we go. There he is. He's now walking. Oh, I gotta shrink him down. He's walking on water. Here he goes. Okay. We need to get something in that water. So I'm gonna go get some art. Because I can do that. I'm gonna go get an image to put in here. Um, yeah, so speaking of Star Wars Episode One, one of my best gaming stories ever was I was, I don't remember how old I was exactly, but it was still the N64 era because it was Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3. And my brother uh, and I were playing Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 and it uh, just, 
we he would make these levels and they were just very um they they were interesting like they were just he would basically just put like all these pits of fire and spikes and all sorts of things in 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 them and like it, it was just very dangerous to obviously skateboard there um so he made this like test uh, my brother yes this is this is the brother who is well he's my only brother he's now studying architecture so uh yeah i'm sure you all feel real safe right about now <laughs> um okay that'll do so he um made this level and so in tony hawk's pro skater 3 you could unlock and play as darth maul and so we were just goofing all around practicing and playing as as darth and i was playing as darth maul and I threw Darth Maul into one of those pits of, like, fire and lava and stuff. Because when you throw people into those pits, generally they would just kind of, like, bounce back out. Oh, my friend is here. Hi, Haley. How are you? Um, <laughs> yes. Um, it, uh, yeah, so it, we kind of decided it would be funny to, like, put Darth Maul into a pit. Um, and he um, kind of glitched and so he was just kind of laying there dead and so we kind of accidentally killed Darth Maul here this is just the only thing that can possibly go in the water here it's Prince Sidon um there we go um and so like basically we killed Darth Maul on Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 and he just laid there dead like no matter what button combinations we tried he would not reset um so we killed Darth Maul by throwing him into a pit of lava and uh, spikes which is kind of funny considering that in episode 1 he uh falls down a pit like chopped in half and uh it, it was just one of the funniest things that it it was that it happened as well oh yes oh hi big oh so just put undine in the water yes i will put undine in the water too because you know what we can't have enough like cool fish people let me go get undine uh i just need to go get some clip art of undine Let's see it's just a picture of sidon i need the other f everyone else's um fish you can't have too many dateable fish in um in a clip right there. Let me get a good. Let me get her sprite. There it is. Okay. Give me the fish. There she is. I need the fish. I'm just gonna put as many fish. Copy image and paste. Okay, good. There she is. All right. I'm just gonna copy Undyne in. No, I just want to put there we go. Yeah, Storybook Weaver lets me paste which is, uh random things in, which is great. Okay, I'm gonna put Undyne. Here's Undyne. Oh, she did not go in very well. There she is. She looks like like very eight bit. Uh, oops. Let me see if I can find a better one. But there she is. Uh, everyone's fish wife. Let me see if I can find like some. I mean, I can always put like her battle sprite in. Like, oh, that's a gif though. I need like a st static image of her. Now these are all moving. Darn. Uh, you know what? Here we go. Let's take the anime is real picture. That's a good one. Um. I, uh, which, by the way, I did not have the heart to tell Undyne that anime is not real. I just couldn't do it. Like, how could you tell her? I didn't want to ruin her dreams. I want I want her to believe. Like, she, she cannot. She, she needs to believe that anime is real. It's very important. Let me just remove this Undyne here. Paste in the other one. Okay, none of these do really want to cooperate. It's taking out the black uh, background is what it's doing. And yeah, it's just Undertale's art style, but we can have like a transparent Undyne here. Um, there we go. There she is. Fish. It is fish. Okay. So there's some fish. We have some good fish. So I move John Lair. Game Man's Ultimate Lesbian and Gay Man Solidarity. Oh my god. Oh yeah, here. Yeah, I could. I could technically like put side on so like his he's like rising above the water slightly. Yeah, we'll have like these. These are ev everyone's favorite um, fish. Yeah, uh, yeah. Everyone's favorite gay fish. I should put like edit it so it has that like, that song from South Park where Con it's a uh, that Kanye West, fake Kanye West song, gay fish. I feel like it would be appropriate here. Um, but yeah, you can then put. Let me just put some good. Uh, get a good midi on this. Oh, oh, thank you. Yes, lots of people have been starting to follow me on Twitch. I'm like genuinely amazed. Uh, thank you all so much. Like, I really appreciate it <laughs> because I'm I'm not playing a very exciting game. For the man can walk on water. Bassinet confirmed. There you go. 
Okay, so wait, you want to hear it read Japanese? I saw in the chat. Where is There it is. Okay, yeah, we're going to have it read some Japanese now because it's not very good at reading Japanese at all. Here it goes. It's not very good. It's it's mood. <laughs> <laughs> it's not very good at reading Japanese in in a in a nutshell. That's it's just not good at it. It's not good at it's for what's basically Japanese the original version of Tiki Tiki Tempo. Yeah, it's not very good at reading. Uh, like even if I wrote like like if I wrote like Dio Brando's. Uh, yeah, yeah, it wouldn't be able to read. Like if I I couldn't paste that in. I mean I can try, but like if I haven't even read like Dio. It pronounces it mu, like museum. Ah, uh, the Spanish phrase. I would have to close the program and reopen it to do that, but I will. I will paste that same phrase later into the Spanish. Um, it, I'm gonna save that and I'll paste it into the thing so that I can just have an extra bonus recording of it doing that in Spanish, or quote in Spanish or the Spanish voice because the Spanish voice is not very. Uh, let's see. Um, the Spanish voice is interesting. It's it's a male voice, and it's um, yeah, you got it, It's very interesting to hear reading English too, because like the English voice can't read Spanish very well, and the Spanish voice can't read English very well because they're programmed specifically to like have the in correct inflection for like one language and one language only. So they can't really switch back and forth between languages, and it just it just does not. Uh, like if I were to try to copy and paste in the actual. Yeah, it didn't take it. And it can't even read. It's trying to read the question marks. I just feel like that's worth pointing out. It tried. Uh, it did actually try to read question marks there. Oh, no. I don't want airplane mode on. No. Off. Thank you. No airplane mode. No. Okay. Yeah. Have it say my name and also lesbian and also go to Ibushi. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, the English voice can't read English very well either. It can't. It can't read anything very well. Okay. So if I have it say... Yeah. My, yeah. I can have it say lots of things, yeah. Uh, I'll, have to, I'll have to, like, write, like, a full story at some point. I can just do the whole... Yeah, I'll just copy everything and paste it in here. Because, like, if I just change it to... Like, it could... For a while, it could not pronounce my brother's name. Uh, my brother's first name is Tom. And if you would put in Thomas, the original version of this program could not read the name Thomas. It would say Miss. And so we tried everything we could to try to get it to pronounce Thomas right. Let's see. Let me just capitalize. Okay. Here it goes. Oh, it said your name right. Ibushi. Koda Ibushi. Okay. Close enough. <laughs> it's not very good at reading anything. Like, it's just very... It said your name right, though. It's like, But it could not say my brother's name. It was just a, uh, oh my god, I forgot, I forgot you named your, your leopard gecko Bodhi. Oh my god, I he, he named it after Bodhi Rook, what a cute baby. I used to have leopard geckos, I miss them, they were so cute. Ah, thank you all for following, I really appreciate the support, like, it's amazing to me that people are actually, okay, yeah, what if, so Doorknob Man is just kind of doing his thing here. Uh, I just gotta go through my entire, okay, there we go. Yeah, Doorknob Man is, uh, I, I'm gonna have to probably end soon, because we're gonna have to get to the new, the next streamer soon. Amazing. <laughs> Sorry, Rook Weaver is the true LGBT icon. <laughs> it can say that. Yeah, it's funny. True didn't want, oh yeah, that's right, your other one is named Chirut. Oh my god, Bodhi and Chirut. I love, they're so cute. Oh my god. Uh, I love Star Wars so much. I have a lot of... Oh yeah, then there's like a... This is a good one. There's like a cemetery in here. And I wonder if these are like programmers or whatever. But then I realized that all of these people were born in 1952 and died in 1971. Meaning that they all died at age 19. So I guess it's supposed to be military cemetery because there's flags and like... Oh, and you have a bearded dragon named Baze. Oh, Baze Melbus. Oh my gosh. They're all gonna... Baze and Chirut have to be like 
like a thing. Like they gotta hang out. Uh, do you collect them all? Get yeah, get every character from Rogue One as a lizard. Like that. That would be a great. Okay, we're gonna have Doorknob Man. Okay, now this is a great way to show that I can crop the art. Um, uh, as I can do this, um, I can actually go into the eraser mode and I can like remove like his legs. Yeah, there we go. And then I can put him coming out of the chimney. Here he is. Decided to be Santa and bring presents to all the good little goblins clip art in the game. Yeah, it's like, who was here before Santa? A good question. Home Invader Doorknob Man. Yeah, he's here to, uh, he's, he's gonna, uh, steal somebody's Xbox now. Um, <laughs> he's coming in to steal an Xbox and he's gonna, like, make off with it and sell it on, uh, Craigslist. the doorknob man stole christmas yeah oh my god <laughs> doorknob man just it's funny like storybook weaver is interesting in that it actually has like a christmas tree and a menorah so like it does doorknob krampus oh my god i love krampus krampus is like the weirdest thing it's amazing so like let me uh, go get those goblins in their questionable clothes again like this is just this was children's oh speaking of darth plagueis um uh, doesn't this look like emperor palpatine like, it's supposed to be a sorcerer, but I am convinced that this is Emperor Palpatine. Like, this is... And this is Gruntilda from Banjo-Kazooie. Like, that's not a normal witch. It's specifically Gruntilda. It looks just like her. Like, the body shape and everything. It's Gruntilda. So the goblins are going to get some new uh, outfits, which means I basically just have to change their clothes. So you can change the colors of things, too, in Storybook Weaver. Um... <laughs> Jewish LGBT icon because Menorah. It also has a... And, uh, it has like a dreidel too, I think, if I remember. It's very small though. You have to like make it big to make it show up. Emperor Palpatine's D and D character. That is Palpatine. <laughs> yeah, it's Palpatine. Do it. Uh, it's Palpatine. Um, Emperor Palpatine likes glitter. It's definitely Palpatine. Like I, I, I'm positive that that's Palpatine. Like that's they were definitely making a Star Wars reference in this game. Uh, game program specifically like gonna Jack. Hmm. I wonder if that's what they were going for. Like, they just call it Goblin, but, like, you never know with, with them. They could have... Okay, you gotta go to bed? All right. Well, yeah, we're gonna be passing on to the new next streamer in a couple minutes anyway. Um, so, yeah, um, which will actually... Who's actually in the chat? Um, yeah. The little dude on the left. Yeah, he's gonna... He I like his, um, his like, briefs. He's just wearing briefs. Yeah, do it. Yeah. <laughs> for Palpatine. Ah, thank you. We're hope Hopefully we will raise some money for charity. Uh, some more money for charity. We're trying to do our best. Yeah, we're just gonna give them some new duds. So, like, you can change the colors of their clothes. Um, and you can also change the color of their skin. Um, uh, so, like, if you need to make, like, somebody who has, like, green skin, like, Piccolo, you can change. Oh my god, how cute. <laughs> yeah, I can put him in, like, I could make them, like, a very unfortunate color. Uh, let's not do that, actually. That's gross. Let's go, like, Blue, so it looks like like Superman ones. There we go. I need some happy music. Happy music. I need happy music. There we go. That's happy music. The goblins got new questionable outfits. What a happy occasion. There we go. Oh. We just got a donation from some lizards. I just feel like everyone needs to know that. Uh, thank you, lizards. We really appreciate your support. Oh, uh, okay. So yeah. I'm gonna probably start closing this one out because I'm gonna no make it grosser, make them yellow. Okay, yes, yeah, screw it. Let's make them yellow. Uh, oops, wrong one. There we go. There we go. Looks now. It looks like he uh, immediately stained them. Uh, he got them and he immediately ruined them. Yeah, so I'm gonna probably start winding this one down because I gotta pass off to the next streamer soon. Um, yeah. Better yellow than brown. Yes, true. It's always better yellow than brown, I guess, in this case. 
Uh, yeah, so let me just check our streaming schedule. Um, I believe Wolf's Brain is up next. Um, so I'm gonna start winding this one down while Wolfie gets ready. Um, cause, uh, yeah, we're, we've still got a bunch more streamers to go tonight. Uh, so that's gonna be pretty great. Um, yeah, so, yeah, Wolfie's gonna be on after me. Um, so... Yeah, Wolfie, and then Suji, and then uh, Belades, and then Jubals is going to be finishing up tonight. Uh, so yeah, we've got quite a few uh, folks still to go. If it's yellow, let it mellow. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. It's like uh, yellow snow, let it go, or whatever. Like, um, besides the four cats I have, I have two dogs, and like, there's enough yellow snow in the yard in winter to like last me a lifetime. I don't need to... It's interesting looking back. Yeah, in the 90s. I have some others as well but like this is the one I've consistently used the most since 1994 like I've been using this program at least once a year since 1994 because it's just you can do some really messed up things with Storybook Weaver uh so it works oh so now you can save the whole screen awesome yay and tell your lizards thank you for the donation we really appreciate it <laughs> they are such cuties and I love them I'll have to get Murphy to do a donation too um, wherever he is, I don't know. He's not in here right now. Yeah, so. Door number man went to the. Uh, I'm gonna make an Eddie Murph. Uh, um, gonna make an Eddie Money joke here. Yeah, and then we'll go back and we'll read. Oh, hey, the Mets actually won a baseball game. Oh my god. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> yes, Murphy is probably being a blob somewhere. Um, that's that's what he does. So yeah, we'll go back and we'll read our entire story. And uh, then I will sign off and I will hand over the stream to um, to Wolf's Brain. He is next. Um, so uh, let me just go back and go to the beginning and we will read this. No, I think I already used that MIDI. Um, there we go. We'll use the one that sounds weirdly like the Song of Storms from... Ocarina of Time. Man went to the airport and bought two tickets to paradise. He deserved it. He was now free. Yeah, there's Murphy. Murphy is kind of like a um, Snorlax that I kind of accidentally adopted. I just kind of have a giant cat. Uh, I have a giant cat named Murphy. He is um, like a 20 pound cat and he just kind of you know what, let me just tag Murphy so you can see how big he actually is. This is um, this is just a large animal that I've somehow acquired over the course of my life. Uh, oh, no, it didn't paste. Okay, you know what, I'll just do this. I'll just actually pull up an image of Murphy here. Um, large. Because he just needs to be seen to be believed. He is um, gigantic. Uh, if I sources yeah uh image and i'll just go get you a picture of murphy because he is a big boy pets uh yeah this is a good one that shows how big he actually is uh there he is this is murphy he is um he is very big um <laughs> and uh like for reference, I'm like five foot two, so there's he's just a large animal. Next time on Storybook Weaver Deluxe, Doorknob Man Two, Trouble in Paradise. Oh my God! Yeah, we're gonna do that. Uh, yeah, so there's Murph. He's a um, he's a big boy. So uh, yeah, let me get this back up. Yeah, he's a large animal. So I'm gonna go to Storybook Weaver. All right, we're gonna read our story, and then I'm gonna hand off the stream uh, to Wolfie who should be getting ready right now. So, uh, yeah. Okay, let's read our- yes, the lard- yeah, he is a floof. He is the- he is the lard lord. That is his nickname around here. Oh, thank you, Haley. You didn't have to. You are very nice. Thank you all so much for giving to the, this charity. Like, I really, really means a lot to me that you guys are all donating. For not man breaks free. The chat. What a bit odd creature. Only the Minnesota Educational Computing Consortium knows. Alright. Oh yeah, my bad art. I forgot I did that. 
Gim that Riglim as far as Ship Caitlin or as Inter Terra Transit. Gim as Rectus when as Strange Creatures and Ditching Oneas and Hedan and Handan no no he as a thing arrived and he emanated the ship's crew. We in command one boom the boom is on the ship for a known reason. This is the. Now that demons three, four not man decided to go to the Scatterpark damn schmeck. The Scatterpark. It's getting breath. We're going to the Scatterpark. Four not man and instructed the orchids went to the main. <laughs> Damning to the studios. I have this on my iPod. You can listen to it the next time you're in my car. <laughs> I have most of the midis from this program on my iPod because I'm the worst. Or the best, I don't know. I'm probably- <laughs> Mech probably, like, if they knew I was still using this, they'd probably be, like, shocked. But maybe secretly pleased, I don't know. At least until they found out how I used it. Close enough. Windows down blasting this. I should. It'll be the new Rick roll. I'm just gonna clown roll everybody. He did not expect it to be relevant in any way. Doorknob man created the sinkhole at Mar-a-Lago. Confirmed. Meanwhile, the sexy goblins decided to go out for a night on the town and hit the club. I am not using it for porn, no, that's true. <laughs> or erotic fanfic. I'm pretty sure there are people who have. Not man makes his way to the casino, where he greeted the resident casino owner. The casino owner grunted at him and acknowledged his newfound freedom. Then he encouraged him to try the slots. The casino owner did it on his ship because he is the casino owner and the Don't give me ideas. I'll give you this program so you can have it, because you can do a lot of ridiculous things with it. He's singing some carrake. This is such a loud MIDI. Oh no, Sonic. If the Sonic fandom got their hands on this program. Floral print shop of the hut! That's what he looks like! <laughs> this page was written entirely by the chat. This is a great page. That page was written by the chat and it's great. Eventually I'm gonna do a storybook weaver stream where the entire thing is written by the chat. It's gonna be fantastic. There we go. Not man can walk on water. Fish. Confirmed. Everyone's favorite fish. So creepy. To be Santa and bring present to all the good little goblin snippers in the game. This is just very disturbing. The goblins want new collections of outfits. What a happy occasion! <laughs> Beautiful. Doorknob man went to the airport and bought two tickets to paradise. He deserved it. He was now free. There we go. All right, and that is Storybook Weaver Deluxe. Uh, that is the uh, Storybook Weaver primer for everybody. All right, so I am done for tonight. I'm going to switch on over. Um, I'm gonna hand the stream over to uh, Wolfie. I'm gonna link you guys in the script in the chat, so you can see where Wolfie is gonna be streaming in like just a moment. And uh, yeah, we are. Thank you all so much. Can Doorknob Man talk? I wonder if he can. 
to the Newberry Meadow. If I ever got a Newberry for something I did in Storyberry, Storybook Weaver, I would, like, shit myself. Um, there's just no... Oh, crap. It just pasted something else. That was uh, what we pasted into Storybook Weaver and had it read earlier. It's not cop... Oh, come on, copy. Copy the link. Okay, I think I got it this time. There we go. It is not cooperating. It was... Yeah, we were trying to have it say things. There we go. Yes, I love you guys too. Thank you all so much. Thank you uh, everyone for helping. So Wolfie's next. Um, just head on over to Wolfie's page and uh, we are going to get started and I will be logging off now. So uh, thank you all so much for joining the stream. You've all been wonderful and uh, have a good night.